Now this occurred last night at about 8.53 p.m. That's when the Fresno Police Department received a call at the 4900 block of North Gerhardt uh, on a, what we believe to be a domestic shooting. Uh, the, there were, we had multiple 911 calls that stated that uh, they were hearing gunshots and they could hear a woman screaming. Uh, once the officers arrived, they found an African-American female in her 50s who did have a gunshot wound to the stomach. The victim, fortunately, was responsive and she was able to tell officers who the suspect was. She named 50-year-old Robert Lee Davis Jr., 1218 of 70, as the shooter. Uh, the victim was also able to give us uh, a suspect vehicle description as a maroon SUV. The victim was taken to the hospital and she remains there now um, in critical but stable condition. About 15 minutes later, after the uh, response to the incident, um, at about 9.08, officers from the Southwest Patrol Division observed a vehicle um, in Southwest uh, that appeared to be the suspect vehicle. The suspect vehicle was at Whitesbridge Avenue in Modoc. Uh, the vehicle then sped away from officers and initiated a police pursuit. During the pursuit, the suspect turned westbound on Oleander Street Avenue, excuse me, for Modoc, and fired an AR-15 style rifle at the officers. He fired one time at that point. The pursuit only lasted about three minutes, and it ended when the suspect vehicle collided into a chain link fence which was just on the south side of Whitesbridge, uh, west of Fruit Avenue. As the officers pulled up to the uh, scene of the collision, the suspect fired multiple rounds at the officers. Three of the, of the officers were able to engage the suspect and uh, struck him uh, three different times. The suspect then ran a short distance uh, just to the south and was later found in a field. Uh, in order to protect the officers uh, and to use caution, the officers utilized the K-9 unit along with Air One and tactical units to locate and then apprehend the suspect without further incident and without anybody being further hurt. Uh, at this point in time, Robert Lee Davis Jr. will be charged with attempted murder, a felony assault, uh, which is domestic related, and also with enhanced firearm charges. Uh, Davis is also facing three pending charges of attempted murder on the police officers. Now, I want to detail a couple of, of things. Number one, this was an extremely dangerous situation. Uh, Davis has a long history, a long criminal history. He's been in prison for um, uh, more than two decades uh, for, for violent offenses. He was just paroled um, about a year ago. The uh, firearm that he had in his possession was a, an AR-15 style rifle. Number one, he's a convicted felon. He should not have it. Uh, number two, he also had an extended magazine, a 30-round magazine, which is also illegal. And the firearm itself was modified to have a short barrel. So without a doubt, he should not have had this firearm to begin with. Secondly, I want to say that I'm, number one, very relieved that uh, none of the officers were hurt uh, or injured. I'm very responded. Uh, they were professional. Um, they, they took care of each other uh, following officer safety techniques that we teach and uh, they were able to apprehend this individual safely. But um, the only reason why this incident is not a lot worse is because the suspect's firearm malfunctioned during the incident. He still had um, about 10 live rounds in, in the firearm, but uh, somehow it malfunctioned, so he was only able to fire three times at the officers. So um, a very scary situation, but also um, I'm very relieved that it ended the way the way it did. Now, this is going to be our second uh, officer ball shooting of the year. And with that being said, I want to open up to any questions that you guys might have. What was the relationship, again, between uh, him and the Well, victim? you know, in order to protect the victim, I'm, I'm not going to discuss, uh, go into detail. I can tell you that it, it is considered a domestic uh, situation. So you're not going to say that they're a girlfriend, boyfriend, or married? Right. Do you think info on the source of that rifle? Uh, at this point in time, we don't know. We did run the serial number, and it is not registered here in the state of California. Uh, we also know that it's not coming back stolen, but it's very obvious to, to us that uh, he should have never had possession of this, of this firearm for various reasons. It's, it's an illegal firearm. It's modified. It has an extended magazine, and uh, he's a convicted felon. He should not have access to this type of firearm. Can you run down some of the list of uh, offenses you've been uh, 
charged with or arrested with in the past? Sure, yeah, I got some of these written here. He has uh, prior offenses of assault with a deadly weapon, firearm, robbery, home invasion, uh, narcotics charges, possession of stolen property, and um, some parole violations. And I'm sorry, is he from Fresno? I do not know where he's from originally. I'll try to find out. But uh, he was living in Fresno, though, or? Yes, he had been frequenting the uh, Fresno area, and um, he and the victim did have a, a history of, uh, of domestic violence. Um, uh, approximately three incidents that occurred here within the last three months that uh, were documented by the police department. And uh, for whatever reason today, you know, he, he decided that he was going to go over to the victim's house and, and uh, try to kill her. And then when he, f when he fled the scene, he uh, obviously did not want to go um, peacefully and try to kill some of my officers. So. Uh, again, we feel very, very relieved um, that, that nothing happened uh, to the officers, but also, you know, very proud of them for their professional actions. Did the shooting take place inside the house? There was, uh, that's still being determined. Um, he may have been outside the house and was firing through the door. Um, that's still being investigated right now. Were there any other people inside the house? I don't believe so. Talk about this weapon. I know you already mentioned it, but I mean, is this something we see, that you guys see, you know, well, it's been it's been highly documented here in the last uh, year. You know, we've had a very violent uh, uh, 2020, and 2021 has been no different. Uh, we've been recovering um, a lot of firearms. You know, really dozens every week. And um, in, in most cases, these firearms are in the hands of people who should not have them, either gang members or uh, convicted felons. So that's a, that's a major concern, and I've been very vocal about it. That it's a concern uh, for me because. Uh, this is a perfect example of what my officers have to face uh, day in and day out. Um, people who should not have firearms, and they have them. And some of these weapons, like the one behind me, I mean, it's, it's a high-powered weapon. It's a, it's a rifle round. And, and the only reason why the situation wasn't worse is because the rifle malfunctioned. And I'm sorry, did you say he was a gang member or a former gang member? Uh, I, don't, I don't have his, okay. uh, his gang affiliation. I, I didn't say that. As far as the weapon, is it a... Do you know if it's stolen or, or not? It, uh, we, we ran the serial number. It's not coming back stolen, but it's also not, it has not been registered in the state. Any uh, frustration that this guy's got three DVDs in the recent events and walked out during the game? Yeah, he, he definitely has a, a history of domestic violence. And, um, uh, you know, as a police department, we, we have to do a great job uh, every time that we get a call like this to document it correctly so we can try to build a case. But, um, you know, keep in mind, this, this, this individual's done, you know, over two decades in prison for violent crimes. And you know, he's out there again, and he's in possession of a firearm, which, which he's not supposed to. So um, you know, some of these laws only go, um, you know, a certain length uh, as far as keeping um, the citizens safe. And, um, you know, it is a frustration. It's a frustration for police because not only is it that much more dangerous, but, um, you know, it, it, we feel like we're spinning our wheels sometimes trying to improve the situation lower violent crime, but yet uh, parolees, ex-felons can, can get a hold of a firearm uh, quite easily in this town. Chief, if you could elaborate, I mean, obviously officers already know, they're already on heightened alert when they show up knowing that somebody's been shot, but now they go to a situation like this, they get into a little bit of a chase, and then a, a, a shootout breaks out. I mean, just, you know, the difficulty, the challenge, just everything that mm -hmm. seems to be working against officers these days. Yeah, well, it's, it's a very, very difficult job. It's a very difficult job, and I think we're in, in an era uh, where, where the job isn't as appreciated like it used to be. Um, but but these officers did an outstanding job. Um, just before I came in here for the for, for this uh, interview, um, I was watching the uh, body worn camera video, and I was uh, completely amazed and impressed um, at, at how they responded. Uh, they were able to communicate. They were you know, following this vehicle, knowing that this person just tried to kill somebody, uh, taking on fire. Um, as they're chasing this individual, and yet they kept their composure. Uh, they managed to, you know, follow him until he, he crashed out. Uh, they, they got a perimeter. They were able to communicate. Uh, they were communicating very well where the suspect was going, the fact that he was shooting at them, and, and ultimately they were able to, to neutralize him and even do so uh, with him losing, without losing his, his life. So to me, it's extremely impressive. Um, it shows the level of professionalism in our police department. And, um, you know, we, we, we need more officers like, like the three that were involved in the shooting last night. Are they on um, administrative leave at this point? Yeah, they, you know, we have to go through a process, obviously, because of the investigation. And um, they, they will be uh, interviewed officially at a later time. And then once they're ready to come back to work, they're going to bring them back to work. And you said there's three officers that are on 
Yeah, there were three officers that were involved. They were all male officers. All of them had between four and a half and five years uh, of service um, here at the Fresno Police Department. And um, you know, I spoke, I spoke to a couple and left, left some messages uh, so I could just, you know, number one, let them know that I'm, you know, I was proud of them, but also very relieved that they're okay. Can you speak to the, the fact that nowadays domestic violent calls are completely different from the past? Well, d domestic incidents are, are, have always been statistically some of the most dangerous incidents because they're, they're, they're so volatile, uh, people are so agitated when you, just, as soon as you arrive to the scene, they're very agitated and they're very amped up. And, and, and you really have to think of so many things. I mean, you're there basically to try to keep the peace, but then you have to determine whether a crime was committed and then act on it. And, you know, it, it happens a lot of times where, where, where you're trying to help the victim. Maybe, maybe they don't want the help. Uh, but, but we do have a lot of great resources, resources out there uh, that can help police officers to get victims help. Uh, the the um, uh, Marjorie Mason Center is, is a great example of that, uh, that, that provides emergency shelter and a lot of other resources to, to victims of domestic violence. But do, you, do you find that sometimes uh, drugs or alcohol are a play a pivotal point? S sometimes they do. Um, in, in this case, we, we haven't determined that, but uh, a lot of times uh, alcohol and drugs do play a, a role in this. Chief, just one more time to say uh, what's going on with Davis now, like you know, his, uh, his update, his status. Right, he is, uh, he's still in the hospital, and uh, as soon as he's released, he'll be taken to the uh, Fresno County Jail and be booked on those charges, and we're also looking to add additional charges for the officers. Did you say he was shot? Or he was uh, hit three different times by my officers, and he was shot in the chest uh, and the upper thigh, and um, on the side of his torso. Bit too, I'm sorry? Was he also bit by dogs? I'm sure he was, the canine yeah. Uh No chance you guys are releasing body cam footage, right? Uh, not at this time, but you know, at some point, um, I think once it's fully <laughs> investigated, I think it's a great example to show the public just what the officers have to, have to face it with uh, out there on the streets. Now that's a weird looking type of uh, weapon. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out where the, uh, the chamber is that fires uh, the barrel. Yeah. And it looks like it's to the left of you, as far as that goes. Right. Well, it's actually on the other side of it, if I remember it, you know, on an uh, AR platform. But definitely the uh, stock has been removed. Uh, the, the barrel is way too short. It's been modified. Um, it, you know, it, it, that's too short of a barrel, and it, it makes it an illegal rifle. So that, coupled by the 30-round magazine, the fact that he shouldn't have a rifle to begin with, makes it highly illegal. Any other questions? You going to look for other... Uh ballistics to see if this weapon's been used before? We always do a full test on every firearm uh, that is used in, in a crime like this. So we'll run the full tests and, you know, once those come back, we may be able to link it to other crimes. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you guys.